313. 313, we'll get our offer. Ask Brother Clyde if you would. Bless her all. Good evening. Boy, that's on tonight, ain't it? It's good to have everybody out in the house of the Lord tonight. It's a good crowd, good Wednesday night crowd. It's good to see everybody out. I want to thank the Lord again for what a service we had Sunday. I've, I told you I'd think about it all week, and I have. I've fed off of that uh, ever since Sunday, and I'm sure a lot of youngs have too. Thankful that we go to a church where the Lord will, will smile on us and bless us like he did Sunday. It's time to go before the Lord in prayer. Is there any spoken prayer request? Let's remember Pat's request. Remember Clyde's request. Mm -hmm. 
Remember J.M. Remember my family. My hope and praise. Remember this. Remember this. Uh, Ed Buchanan, you said. Let's remember Ed. I got uh, special orders that I'm not at Mercy Out every day to see my kids. And it just so happened when I took off this my vacation appointment, mm -hmm. uh, I went to the hospital and I went to see my Remember Brother Don. Just remember them. Any other spoken request? Tyler Shelton, let's re remember him in this prayer. If there's no other spoken request or the unspoken, show them, but just step lifting your hands. Everybody that can and will, let's gather around the altar. Darren Higgins, if you will, to lead us. Anybody have a special song or a testimony before we turn it over to Kevin? Yeah. 
Yes. Any other testimonies? There is an unseen hand to me that leads through ways I cannot see while going through this world of this hand still as I go help me sing I'm trusting to the unseen hand that guides me through this weary land and some sweet day I'll reach that strength got it the unseen hand <clears throat> his hand has led through shadows and while it leads I'll have no fear I know me to that home where sin nor sorrow near can come I'm trusting to the unseen hand that guides me through this weary land and some sweet day I'll reach that strand Still guided by The unseen hand <coughs> I long to see my Savior's face and sing the story saved by grace and there upon that golden strand we'll praise him for his guiding I'm trusting to the unseen hand that guides me through this weary land and some sweet day I'll reach that strand still guided by the unseen hand. Amen. Amen. Who 
руки на это. The lyrics to, to the song, I, I won't have to worry anymore. This goes right along, this song I just sung, and, and this song, uh, uh, kind of what the Lord has laid on our heart tonight is, is fret not. That's been on my mind this evening. Uh, one of the definitions to fret means to worry. And uh, the, the Lord tells us in many different ways in his word not to worry. Uh, let not your heart be troubled. In other words, don't, don't worry. Fret not. Um, but uh, I was thinking, uh, we all know the song, I won't have to worry anymore. Uh, but it says down here, my burden's heavy. And my road seems rough and long. Sometimes my feet grow weary and so slow. But a brighter day is coming. <laughs> As soon I'll step on heaven's shore, and I won't have to worry anymore. I won't have to worry when I reach the other shore. All my troubles will be over, and I'll rest forevermore. My eyes will be on Jesus, and my heart will be aglow. And I won't have to worry anymore. Now listen to the words here. That's why I'm reading this. I want us to listen to the words. Someday when life is over and I've said my last goodbye, I'll see my Savior standing at the door. Then I'll hear him say, you're welcome. All your cares you've left behind. And I won't have to worry anymore. No, I won't have to worry when I reach the other shore. All my troubles will be over and I'll rest forevermore. My eyes will be on Jesus and my heart will be aglow. And I won't have to worry anymore. Now you think about, it seems like the older we get, the more responsibility we get, the more we worry. I used not to be a worry ward. I was carefree all the way up through my brother and my mother worried enough for the rest of the family. And we never, I mean, I didn't. I, but the more, the more responsibility I had down through life, I began to worry. And uh, I didn't worry about myself uh, growing up. You know, and didn't just worried, concerned about others. But uh, it seemed like the more I, the older I get, uh, we tend to worry. Am I the only one that feels that way? It seemed like the older the, the older you get, and you got youngins. My, I didn't worry near as much, but when I got youngins, I started worrying. And no matter how old they are, you still worry about them. No matter how what age they are. They might be adults out of the home, but you still worry about them. They're still you youngins, and uh, we worry about. Uh, uh, we worry. I think the biggest things we worry about are things that we have no control over. I don't know. Just here lately, I've been thinking about worrying and 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 why why I worry. I mean, I see we include myself because. Because we're human, ain't we? Let me put this on just in case I start getting away from the mic. But uh, I just want to just share my heart tonight. I, I, I thought is, is the most worry, I think the most things we worry about are things we have no control over. And uh, things that uh, you've heard me say before that, that God promised us. And... Uh, we, we worry about, uh, I don't know about you, but I worry, I guess, more about my health now than I did before I had a family. Because I had cancer before I had a family. But after I've had cancer, I've had the last two cancers I've had, 
has been in, since I was married. I was diagnosed with melanoma a month after Tiffany and I got married. And I started worrying then. Wow, I mean, melanoma, if it spread, you know, my mind went crazy. But God took care of that. And then, uh, and then uh, Corbin was born with cancer, as, as you all know, and I wanted, I wanted to trade places with him. I worried. But God took care of that too, didn't he? 16 years old now, just answered prayer. God took care. God had a plan, and God took care of it. And it seems like every time that there's been prayers answered, I mean, things that just turn my world upside down, it's almost like God would say, where was your faith? I mean, I allude to the uh, disciples out on the ship that day, and they, the, the water was coming in. They thought they were going to drown. They thought they were going to die. Jesus is on board, and he was in the ship. And, and they woke him up, and, and they said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? In other words, don't you even care about us? Maybe you've never said that in your words, but have you ever said it in your mind? Lord, don't you even care? Lord, I, I am about consumed in this storm, in this circumstance, in this situation. Don't you even care? And you know what? He went to the bow of the ship, and he turned around and he said, Where is your faith? Where's your faith? And I feel like sometimes... He said, wherefore, and he went on to say, wherefore didst thou doubt? Why'd you doubt? Why'd you worry? I'm in the ship. I mean, you think about it. The master of the sea was in the ship. And they were so, I mean, they were about to, they were at their wits end. Jesus is on our ship. He's, he's in our life. Amen. He's, he's living in your heart if you're saved. Amen. He's on board. Why is it sometimes we get, we get way just uh, 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 at our wits' end? And the Bible uh, uh, explains that and mentions that it's like the people out on the, the seas that do the business in the sea. They get at their wits' end when they're tossed to and fro. And we in our Christian life can get at our wits' end. But I, ain't you glad that He understands us? He understands our frame, don't he? It's kind of like Thomas. Thomas doubted him. And he could have scolded Thomas. He could have just, I mean, talked down to him. But you know what he said? Come here, Thomas. He proved to him. He proved to him again. He said, reach here to thy finger. Feel the, 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 the nail prints. Thrust thy hand in my side. He said, it's, it's me. He said, you believe me because you've seen me, Thomas. But blessed are they that have not seen yet believe. Amen. You know, one of these days, like that song said, one of these days we're going to get to see the Lord face to face. And we're going to see that unseen hand that we've been holding on to, that's actually been holding on to us. Amen. All these years, we're going to see Him eyeball to eyeball. Ain't that going to be good? But until then... We walk by faith. And I think that's the hardest part, walking by faith, not by sight. The just shall live by faith, is what the Bible says, right? And walking by faith is not walking by sight. And I feel like that's why we worry is things that we can't see. We cannot see the outcome of the situation we're in right now. And I believe that causes us to fret, and that causes us to worry. Right? We, we worry about the end of it, you know, the end of the matter. But, but I, I, I think about the promises of God that, that He said, Fear not, little flock, for it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He said, In this world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. In other words, promises 
Don't worry about what's going to happen. I'm with you, and I'll be with you. The Bible says, fret not thyself in Psalms 37. You can turn there with me. Psalms 37. That was an introduction, wasn't it? Psalms 37, verse number 1. You don't have to stand because I might read, skip around here. Fret not thyself of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they soon shall be cut down like the grass, whether as a green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land. Verily shalt thou be fed. Now, I want to stop here just a minute and say this. It's very easy to fret, fret over those that are, that are doing evil. It seems like that they're not seeing any trouble in their life. And, and I notice a lot of times the devil will, will magnify that in our mind and think, well, well, it seems like these people that just live any old way they want to, it seems like they're, they're just living it up and they have no troubles, they have no problems. But, but what you don't realize, they don't have peace. They are scared. They might not show it outwardly, but inwardly they're afraid. Man, they don't have peace. If you don't have Jesus, you don't have peace. No matter how much you think you're having a good time, and 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 because here the thing of it is, when they, when them folks get away, get off by themselves, and when they get uh, somewhere by themselves, I think that's why a lot of people allude to to uh, drugs and alcohol because they have a void that they can't fill, and they look to the wrong things to fill it, right? I, I they was I, I'm not going to name the name, but there was this. Uh, well known actor that it was real funny and, and, and I thought, man, that, that guy was just always upbeat, but he had a drug addiction and he died with an overdose. He wasn't truly happy. There was a void. There was a there was a void there, right? So uh, and I think about the the people in our country, our leaders, you know, there's things that, that we disagree with and things that they're allowing going on. The Bible teaches us to pray for them that have rule and authority over us. And, and let's pray, you know, uh, pray for them. That, that And I prayed uh, I prayed a prayer Sunday. I, I, I seem like the Lord just burdened my heart to pray for our country, for our leaders. And, and I prayed for those that are in leadership that don't know the Lord, that they would come to know the Lord. Then they would lead our country in the right way. Right? Yeah, no matter your politics, it is your and my responsibility to pray for them. Man, whether we agree with them or not, we need to pray for them and pray that they would, uh, they would be led by God and that they, would, they, would, uh, they need to be saved. Right? And so uh, uh, the Bible says, Fret not thyself over evil doers, neither be thou envious against workers of iniquity, for they soon shall be cut, cut down like the grass, wither and wither as, as the herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, and so shalt thou dwell in the land. Verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself, list this, also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Delighting thyself. Delighten thyself in the Lord. Man, uh, JP mentioned Sunday about just getting along with God and just getting your Bible out and, 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 and basically falling in love with the Word of God and allowing God to speak to you through uh, His Word. That's delighting yourself in the Lord. Man, you ever, you ever just... Uh, and listen, you, you, may, you may feel like that you can't understand it, but when you read the Word of God through a spiritual mind, it will definitely be a book that you can't set down. I've heard people say that. They'd be reading a novel or reading some other book. They say, well, I just got interested in it. I couldn't set it down. When the Spirit of God begins to give you understanding of His Word, that's a book, friend, that you can't set down. Man, that's delighting yourself. When God begins to speak to you through His Word, that's delighting yourself in the Lord. 
We delight ourselves in a lot of other things. Why can't we? Through the Word of God. Amen. But, but uh, getting, getting back to fret not, fret not thyself. It says this in, in verse number 7. Rest in the Lord. Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for Him. Here's that word again. Fret not thyself because of Him who prospers in His way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger, forsake wrath, Look at this, for, for, fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Now, we, we think about, there's a lot of things that we, we, we worry, we worry about, to, we worry about making ends meet. Uh, I mean, when there's, a, when there's a spike, when the gas goes up and people panic, right? When, when things happen in this world, people tends to panic. When there's a shortage, people panic, right? I, but but uh, I, I believe as God's people, we should not fret over these things that, that we are promised. God has promised us. He will supply all of our needs according to His riches and glory. Ain't that, ain't that a promise? We should rest in His promises. See what I'm saying? I mean, there many a time people during the pandemic would, would say, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? I said, I'm going to trust the Lord. That's what we've always done. And He's always took care of us. I want you to read this chapter when you get home, but there, there's some other verses I want to pick out here and, 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 uh, and, and uh, bring to your attention here. Uh, it, it says this in uh, verse 25. Talking about the provision of the Lord. A reason not to fret. He said, I have been young and now am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. I say amen to that. I'm 43 years old and I've been through a lot in my life. And I have not yet once been forsaken by the Lord. I forsook him in ways many, many a time. But I have never, ever one time found where the Lord has forsaken me. I've never been uh, uh, without. The Lord has always provided. There's been times that it's been overwhelming for me. On paper, it did not make sense how the Lord has provided for me and my family. But God. That's all you can say. But God, who is rich in mercy, for His great love wherewith He has loved us. Now don't you think that God, we look back all of our lives and that God has been so faithful to us and God has, has brought us through so many storms and so many trials. Has He not? Don't you think He can do it again in the present situation we're in today? It's very easy to become just like the Israelites. They came through a, a miracle, and then right through the miracle, right at the end, of it, they'd face another problem, and they would complain as if God hadn't done a thing for them. I mean, to listen to what they were murmuring and complaining about, water and not having nothing to eat, when they got e into the wilderness, you would have thought that God had never parted the water in their life. But that was right after God parted the Red Sea. The Red Sea wasn't a little branch. It was a great body of water. Right? And so, you'd think that that'd be enough proof. Well, you think about it in our life. God's, God's parted a lot of waters in our life. Ain't he? We walked through the fire. As I was singing tonight, I was looking over the crowd. I was looking over the crowd. There's a lot of people. Over, I would say 80% of the people in this church, 85, maybe, maybe more than this, that's been through the fire. That's, that's God's parted waters in your life. 
I mean, Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, they, they, were, they went through the fire. There was not a smell of smoke on them. Their hair wouldn't even see that you couldn't even tell where they had been. But I'm looking over a congregation tonight that's been through some stuff. But there's not a smell of smoke on us. We've walked through the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the seas of life and God's parted waters. God's made ways when they wasn't no way. Now what I'm saying tonight, we have every reason not to fret. Because look how God has brought us this far. I'm ashamed of myself. I'm ashamed of myself sometimes the way I get down and out and discouraged and depressed with the certain situations and you would think Kevin Laws hadn't been through anything, that God hadn't done a thing for him the way I act sometimes. I'm just testifying. Confession's good for the soul. And if we'd all be honest, you know, I've said this before, if some people sometimes would would see us in situations and maybe see us down and out and, 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 and just down in the dumps and maybe hear us talk, that they'd say, well, they act like the Lord ain't done a thing for them. We all get there. We all go through them times. But that's a good time to look back on your life and see where God's brought you from. He's not forsaken you. David was looking back on life when he said, I was young, now I'm old. Never have I seen the righteous forsaken. Not only myself, but everybody else. Never have I seen the righteous forsaken. Yeah, we go through hard times, and yeah, we might not always get everything we want, but we've always had what we've needed, right? Not only physically. Because there's more to the blessings of God than physical. And I, I pray that we all get past that. The blessings of God is not just your materialistic blessings, friend. They're spiritual blessings. There's the treasures unseen. Amen? That's that spiritual, that's that grace, that's that comfort. That's that uh, 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 understanding of the Word of God. That's that glory of God that we get in when we get... Uh, 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 put ourselves and uh, 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 behind us, and and we mortify our members, and we uh, we just uh, get where God is at, and where God wants us to be, and God begins to bless us. That is the true blessings of God, ain't it? When you get where God's at. But a lot of times we we look at the blessings of God as just well the house I live in, the, the car I drive, or. See, all that's temporal stuff. And that, I mean, that, those, they truly are blessings. They are. God has blessed us with things like that, right? That's temporal things. That's things that's going to, that's uh, things that's going to vanish away. Uh, but the eternal things, the eternal blessings of God, what we have in salvation tonight means more than anything. But, uh, David looked back on his life a lot. I, I, really, I really feel like that he reflected, I mean, all, all through his psalms, a lot of through the things that he, that he wrote down, that he pinned down, he, he uh, reflected back on his life. I think uh, he pushed rewind a lot in his life. Solomon was a man that pinned down and was honest and pinned down what he learned through his own mistakes. Right? I believe he learned not to fret. I mean, uh, he taught us to fear the, fear the Lord, didn't he? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, right? The, the reverence, the fear of the Lord there is mentioned in that text, to, to reverence the Lord. To, to fear the Lord is the beginning of the knowledge. But, but to not to fret. And, and down through the Word of God, uh, not only in this passage of Scripture, but in other Scriptures, the, the Word of God has, has, has taught us not to fret, not to worry, but to wait. Instead of worrying, wait. Wait on the Lord, and He shall strengthen thine heart. 
wait I say on the Lord. And uh, I, I believe down through uh, our life, uh, when we face things that we, that's out of our control, that's the first thing we want to do is worry. But instead of worrying, rest. Rest. Not rest in what you know, rest in what you think that's going to happen, but rest in the Lord. If He's trustworthy to save your soul, don't you think He's trustworthy to take care of the need in your life today, tomorrow, and forever? Right? He's trustworthy. Fret not. Fret not. But I believe that that's a part of this flesh that we have to contend with is worry. Some worries more than others, right? But instead of worrying, let's rest. Rest in the Lord. Don't it feel good to rest? Physically speaking, uh, let me let me tell you this. Uh, when I went on my trip here a week or two ago, I rested. I took naps. I went to bed every night about eight thirty, and I slept about seven the next morning. I rested. My body needed rest. I felt, and I was relaxed. All right, you ever been that way spiritually speaking? Wore out. Wore out spiritually. I mean, just just dragging rock bottom, knowing that knowing these things, but just saying, in other words, I don't know how much more I can take of this. But you begin to trust in the Lord and say, God, I've done all I can do. I'm turning it over to you, and that's all you hey. That's all you had to say right there. I'm turning it over to you. How many of us has done that? We've carried it. We've carried it. We've worried. We've tried to figure it out. It got worse. Uh, I, we, we was wore out physically with it. We was wore out mentally, emotionally, every way, every aspect. It was wearing us out. But when we said, Lord, I'm turning it over to you, God give us rest. He just said, here, let me trade with you. Amen? Let me trade with you. Let me, let me have what your burden is, and let me give you some peace about it. Let me give you a peace that passes all understanding. I know I'm preaching to people that knows what I'm talking about. Amen? Because you've been there. You've been through the trial. You've been through the fire. But God, maybe up in the wee hours of the morning, you've said, Lord, I've, I've done all I know to do. I've had about as much as I can take. I'm about to crumble beneath the load. I'm turning it over to you. And God give you peace. And that's all you had to do. And you know what? You rested from that time on. Because you turned it over to the Lord. And when you rest in the Lord, ain't no worry in rest, are they? I mean, it's carefree because you know the problem, the situation is in the Lord's hands. It's in the Lord's hands. That doesn't mean that the storm is over. That doesn't mean that well, a lot of people think, well, in order to get peace, in order to get rest from this, I've got to get to the end of the trial, or I've got to get back on the mountaintop. Hey, he's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. Hey, li listen, he can give you peace uh, in, right in the midst of the storm, right in the midst of the trial. The storm might not be over yet, but you can still rest in the storm because Jesus is on board. He's in the ship, right? The Bible says when he said, when he stretched his hand over the sea and said, Peace be still, there was a great calm, wasn't it? There's a great calm. The McCamies wrote a song a few years ago, or several years ago. Sometimes he calms a storm, but sometimes he calms me. And I have been there. I have actually been there. He didn't necessarily calm the storm, Randy, but he calmed me. He calmed my spirit. 
And sometimes God does that, don't He? Sometimes He takes the storm away, He speaks the Word, and there's a great calm. He calms the storm, and it's all over with. But sometimes it's His will that the storm continue a little while. But in the midst of it, He'll calm us. And we can rest. A rest. When you rest in the Lord, it's like none other that you can ever imagine. You can't do it yourself. You can't work it out. You can't fix it. But when God says, I'll take care of it, you turn it over to me and you turn it over to Him and He just gives you a peace. And I've explained the peace that passes all understanding. When God gets you up in His big laugh and His big arms and he, he gives you a big bear hug and says everything's going to be all right. Now I know I ain't the only one that's felt the peace that passes all understanding. Ain't that the way it feels? It is to me. It, it, it just it feels like God just gets you up and He just squeezes you tight and says, It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. There's another song that comes to my mind. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. Yeah. When God gets us up in his big loving arms and says, it's going to be all right. The storm's going to linger a little while, but it'll be over soon enough. But you're safe. Just rest. Rest in the Lord. Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find what? Rest for your souls. Are you resting tonight? That's on mine and your account. That's our choice, whether we're resting or whether we're wrestling with it. Right? There's some things we bring upon ourselves. We make the road, we make the bed hard for ourselves sometimes. By our own decisions, you choose either to turn it over to the Lord or wrestle with it yourself. But I guess you can blame it on Adam again. Adam nature, we just wrestle with it till we're just about fed up with it, till we're just, we've just uh, had our wits in. Then we finally turn it over to the Lord. But regardless, God gives us rest, don't He? He gives us rest. So don't worry. Rest. Rest in the Lord. Rest. That's the message. Every head bowed and every eye closed. I believe God is speaking. I believe God sent this without there ain't a doubt in my mind tonight. Folks here, folks watching tonight, God knows your need. God, I believe God just sent a word tonight. Hey, you've worried, you've fretted over it enough. It's time to turn it over to the Lord and rest in the Lord. It might be a, a bad situation. It might be somebody's done you wrong or done your family wrong. It might be something that, I, that, that, uh, I, that, that, that you're uh, hurt. You're hurt. Your heart is broken. You've got hatred and bitterness in your heart. And you said, I, 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 can't, I can't do it. I can't forgive. It just seems like I can't get over it. But when you consider the forgiveness of God, and you realize how many times God's been merciful to you when you didn't deserve it, God will give you the grace to forgive as Christ has forgiven you. And then you can rest then. Or it might be, it might be a situation, a storm in your life, a medical problem. It's just eating at you. You need peace over it. I mentioned this, I've mentioned this before, but years ago, my grand, grandmother Street's uh, brother, Paul Baker, he, uh, he come... He was, uh, he come here one time and, and give his testimony. God saved him in, uh, I think, uh, later on in life, actually. And, but he had a great testimony for the Lord. and was just very upbeat and excited for the, for the Lord. And, 
and uh, but he got cancer, and then uh, he fought that cancer for quite a while. I, I don't really ha- know, remember how long, but then after a while, he got another cancer, and he was diagnosed with another cancer. And <clears throat> mom called me and she said, uh, Kevin, they, they diagnosed Paul with uh, another cancer, and uh, this this don't look good. The prognosis ain't good. They don't expect him to live, and it's not good. She said, uh, you might want to call him. Well, I didn't call him that evening on purpose because I give him time to get rest about it, get peace about it. So the next day, I called him. I said, Paul, how you doing? He said, well, now I'm doing good. I said, tell me about it. He said, well, last night, yesterday evening, I come in here, and he said, I screamed, and I cried, and I hollered, and I, I wept, and I screamed some more, and I prayed, and I talked to the Lord. And I said, Lord, I can't handle this but I'm turning it over to you. And he said, Kevin, God's given me a peace about this. He said, I know God's able to heal me. Regardless, uh, uh, the doctor said there's probably no cure and it'll probably take me out of here. He said, but re- really, whether, in other words, that song, whether I go or whether I stay, I'm a winner either way. He said, hey, everything's going to be all right. I got peace about it now. I'm resting in the Lord now. See, there's things that will rock your world in this world, won't they? There's things that you don't understand. Loss of loved ones leaves you home just empty, don't it? And, and oh, mercy, it, it's, it's hard, ain't it? But when God gives you rest about it, in that rest, God will give you strength. God will give you strength to keep on going. God will give you strength. Keep on keeping on. When He gives you rest, there's provision in rest, ain't there? Does anyone tonight need to come talk to the Lord about it? Anyone? Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank You. Thank You for Your Word tonight. Thank You, God, for the reminder. Help us, Lord, to apply this to our heart. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.